Now, the next gentleman, Fabrice Grinder, is a famous serial entrepreneur from France, residing in usually Airbnb locations around the world. And he is probably the biggest expert I know in marketplaces. And we started our conference with marketplaces. Fabrice started his career with marketplaces. So who else could talk about marketplaces? Thank you so much. Thank you, Marco. Glad to have you. Thank you. So I'm here to talk to you about the trends and the latest trends in marketplaces and uh, why basically we're still at the very beginning of the marketplace revolution. Now, the reason I'm somewhat legitimate to talk about this is over the years I've invested in over 500 startups, of which over 350 of them are marketplaces. Now, the irony of this is I actually never set out to be a venture capitalist or an investor in that many companies. It just so happens that when you're a visible consumer-facing internet CEO, a lot of young entrepreneurs come and ask for money and advice. And so little by little, I started investing. But by virtue of being super busy running a you know, 50 country, 5,000 employee company with like hundreds of millions of uniques a month, I decided to create a set of heuristics to, and theses to, to evaluate companies rapidly and to decide to invest pretty quickly. And um, when I sold OLX and when I left in 2013, I basically decided I like building companies, I like investing in companies, and so I was going to create a structure uh, which was going to allow me to do both. So FJ Labs these days is a hybrid startup studio and venture fund where every year we build one company, uh, typically a marketplace, typically in the US, and every year we invest in around 100 companies, most of which are marketplaces. Now, the way we evaluate marketplaces um, is as follows. We have four key criteria. Uh, one is, do we like the team? Now, most people will tell you, oh, I only invest in amazing people. But what really is an amazing team? So for us, as someone who's an amazing storyteller, because someone who can sell your story is going to be able to raise money to higher valuations. They're going to be able to attract better people. They're going to do better deals. Uh, two, it's someone who's completely numbers-driven and analytical. They know the unit economics. They know the business they're in. Now, the Venn diagram of amazing storytellers who are also numbers driven is actually pretty small. So first criteria, people need to be amazing. Number two is, is this an attractive business? And for many people, there are a lot of metrics here, like what's the total addressable market size, what's the capital efficiency. But ultimately, for us, it comes down to what are the unit economics of the business? And for us, good unit economics is one where you recoup your fully loaded customer acquisition costs in six months on a net contribution margin basis where you 3x at least your customer acquisition costs in 18 months. And ideally, you have no idea what your LTV is, because even though you might have 50% churn, the rest of your customers are buying so much more that you have negative churn. And so who knows? Your LTV to CAC ratio is 10 to 1, 15 to 1, 20 to 1. Number three is, are the deal terms reasonable in light of the size of opportunity and in light of uh, the quality of the team, where you are, and your capital efficiency? These three criteria are collectively required. We need to like you, the team, and the deal terms, and if so, we invest. Now, the fourth one is, does it mean we're thesis? And we are thesis-driven. Now, 70% of what we do is thesis-driven, 30% is not. And I'll talk shortly about what our thesis is. Now, this has worked pretty well. Um, we've had, as I said, we've made over 500 investments. We've had over 170 exits. And to date, we've had a realized IRR of over 60%, and that's over 21 years. So, that's, so we do pretty well. Now, the reason I like marketplaces is I like creating liquidity and transparency in otherwise opaque and fragmented markets. And there are three big trends that we're investing in right now. <clears throat> the first one is the verticalization of the horizontal sites. So this is a, a slide that came out uh, in 2011 by David Haber. It's how Craigslist was being attacked vertical by vertical by a lot of players. Now, most VCs would think, oh, that verticalization of classified sites, that's kind of done. But the thing is, there's many things you can verticalize other than Craigslist. And so actually, we're still at the very beginning of it. And we're seeing all of the major horizontal platforms being verticalized. So if you think of eBay, so Reverb is a music instrument marketplace. They're doing 600 million a year in sales. And you would think, oh, my music instruments, so niche. How could that be that big? And these categories can be a lot larger than you expect if you build the right user experience. You know, Twitch, in a way, is a vertical of YouTube. or you know, block renovation is a better way to do your, redo your, your, your bathroom as, a, as opposed to Thumbtack. But even things where people are like, oh, there's winners ready, like, you know, Uber Eats or Deliveroo in the food delivery space are now being verticalized with companies like Slice, which is a pizza delivery app uh, for a variety of reasons. So this 
verticalization trend. It's happening to Upwork. It's happening to Thumbtack. It's happening to every major uh, horizontal player. And it's even happening to categories that seem already reasonably vertical. You know, so Rev.com is a transcription marketplace. And now you see companies like Robin, which are medical transcription marketplaces. Second big trend is the reinvention of marketplaces with the old model, where you go to Klein and Zagen or Craigslist, and you say what you're looking for. A lot of people apply. And you need to agree and come to terms. And that's called a double commit marketplace, where both sides need to talk to each other. The new model is one where you say what you need, and the marketplace picks that person for you. And so in Comet, you just, you know, the companies say, I need a developer, and they pick the developer for you. Or in Miro, you say, I need a photographer, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and Miro takes the, the photographer. Or Uber, you don't pick your driver. Right? The old model would have been you have, to, you have to select amongst your suppliers. Now, the issue of that old model is, is it's a lot of work. The, the new models, you need to curate better. But if you curate your NPS and user experience, a lot better. And the third interesting model is B2B marketplaces. And B2B marketplaces are emerging because in the B2B world, we're still in the dark ages. If you want to buy something, it's still on my Rolodex or email or Excel. And only now is there starting to be price transparency. And so we've invested in everything from like freight forwarding marketplaces to fish marketplaces between the fisheries and the fishermen on one side, the restaurants and the supermarkets on the other side, scrap metal marketplaces, et cetera. And so that world is finally coming to the fore. So these are the three mega trends, and then they're happening in pretty much every vertical. So in food, for instance, we're seeing a massive increase in off-premise ordering, and that's both true of both uh, groceries, with the likes of Instacart for the delivery, or of restaurants, where the deliveries and Uber Eats of the world are driving a lot of revenues. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> good idea. Because they're very good, so we want to see them. <laughs> the, and even in this category, the horizontals are now being complemented by a variety of vertical players. So you're seeing, you know, as I said, slice in the pizza space, but you have ch chow bus in Chinese food. You have like stadium in the B2B uh, catering space. Uh, you're seeing people doing discounts for delivery on the same day. So there's a whole bunch of innovation. And we're still at the very beginning of that revolution in the food space. Now, it's so much cheaper to build virtual brands that are being built for off-premise delivery that you're starting to see an entire infrastructure of companies being built around that. So you have cloud kitchen or dark kitchen companies that are allowing these brands, like the Honest Foods of the World or the Keats, to go and build and sell directly there. Plus, you're starting to see a lot of innovation in automated uh, and vehicle delivery. So the Zoom pizza of the world, where you have like robots that are cooking the pizza that are, where it's being delivered to, or cooked to on the way to you. In real estate, there's been a lot of innovation in prop tech. You're seeing marketplaces emerge. At every, at every types of model. We have the iBuyer model with the open doors of the world, but you're also seeing platforms like RoofSock, which allow people to invest in uh, investable real estate that generates yield. You have like co-living companies, especially in the emerging markets in China and, and in India that are doing really well, like Zolo says. You're seeing reinvention, I guess, of the short-term saying with the brands being created on top of the Airbnbs of the world, like Sunder and Domio. Of these, the most compelling is probably the open door one because it's reinventing the way real estate transactions are happening. And that's why they've grown from zero to billions in GMV in a few years. And the iBuyer model in this category is by far the largest. And cars, kind of the same thing is happening. There's a reinvention of all the different models. You're seeing things like fare on the used car leasing. You're seeing new car leasing models emerging. The iBuyer model is also the one that has done the best with Auto One in, in this country, which is now being replicated in many other countries where the wholesale markets are reasonably, uh, or, or reasonably not developed yet. In jobs, we're seeing verticalization and transactionalization in staffing uh, in, in, frankly, every major vertical, especially with the reinvention of the models where you no longer need to do the interviews. It's happening as well as home services, where in the old days, you'd go to like Thumbtack and you'd say, oh, I need this like plumber, and you'd have to go and pick amongst 300 of them and it'd be late. Now you just say, I need this done, and a company like Renoviso or Sutter will actually get the job done for you. And last but not least, in lending, We've had a first wave of innovators, the lending clubs of the world and the funding circles that have come and started differentiating. And now these guys are also being verticalized. And so you see companies like ClearBank. ClearBank will log in an SMB's Shopify account. They'll log, the, they'll log in in their 
a Google AdWords account, and they'll look at the profitability on an ROI basis of the marketing, and if the, profit, if the marketing is profitable, they'll lend them money. You can imagine Deutsche Bank will never do that. Now, all that to say that we're at the very beginning of the marketplace revolution, and all of us here as entrepreneurs and as investors, we're privileged to be in a position to bring about this better world of tomorrow, a world of equality, of opportunity, and of plenty. Thank you.